This is Tom Colley for Free the Ropes Boxing. It's an absolute pleasure to be joined all the way from the United States with heavyweight contender 989 assassin Jermaine Franklin. Jermaine, how's things? Everything's going fine. How you doing? I'm good, thank you, mate. Thanks for taking the time to come on and speak to Free the Ropes. It's a pleasure to have you on. Um, so just to dive straight in, Jermaine, big sort of 2023, um, now in 2024. I think you really sort of announced yourself on onto the scene and on our shores certainly i know you've been fighting for a long time i'm beating in the states before coming over and facing uh dillian white and anthony joshua um so first of all i wanted to, to sort of go straight into those fights i mean like i say big 2023 um two big fights talk me through those jermaine how, how was it coming over here facing two big names in, in dillian white and anthony joshua and, and, and how was that experience for you uh, it, it was nice coming over. Um, it was great to experience the people, um, some of the culture over there. And, um, I had some good sparring while I was over there also, but um, I, I got a lot of exp experience from the fights. Um, you know, I was able to showcase my skills on, on the top levels to prove that I can hang with the top guys. I still feel like I won the Dillian fight. I feel like I won that hands down, but, you know, uh, this is boxing. But, um you know, um, I plan, hopefully I can get a rematch with AJ down the line somewhere. You know, uh, I got to avenge that. I like to avenge both of my losses, but, you know, I, I, I got to avenge that. Yeah, I mean, you came over, um, a lot of people, you were unbeaten at the time in the States, a lot of people I mean, didn't necessarily know who you were, but you come over and you faced Dillian White and you didn't just come over and, and sort of roll over. You, you came over and showcased fantastic chin, real skills, and it was really, it came down to the wire with yourself and White, and it was a really close decision um is did you expect i mean did you come over here did you ex was dillian white what you expected was he harder than you expected was he did you you know what were you expecting from him how was the fight i, I get everybody the utmost respect in the sport so um while i'm preparing for a guy i never um overlook him or i never um like belittle him in a way you know i always think of him as like a world champion so i can train I want to be in the mind state to train the best I could be to, to work as hard as I as I can to get ready for the fight. So I always mentally, I mean, I might talk trash, but mentally, I'm going to always treat that guy like he's the best guy in the world. I think what a lot of people would be wondering, you've been in there, shared the ring with both of them. Who who did you find was, was the tougher opponent out of AJ and, and White, Jermaine? Um, AJ, AJ was uh, the tougher opponent only because I was fighting him in the judge. Um, you know, uh, I'm not going to cry about it, but some of the rounds he was collar tying and he was throwing uppercuts. And I couldn't get the ref to, like, acknowledge it. And then um, it was just small, simple stuff. It kind of uh, kind of threw me off my game plan um, mentally. I, I feel like after the fourth, fifth round, I mentally wasn't in the fight no more. I just – I was kind of frustrated. And then the Dylan fight, Dylan, Dylan was just fighting. I mean, he threw a couple hammer fists, <laughs> but uh, – other than that, he wasn't, he was out there fighting, you know, fighting the fight. Following those, those fights, Jermaine, obviously you had a comeback win against Isaac Munoz. Um, good, good points win there. When can we, that was sort of July last year now. Uh, when are we expecting to see the 989 assassin back out and fighting again? Is there any plans, any fight dates? Are you in camp at the moment? Uh, hopefully soon. I don't, I don't have an official date set up, but um, hopefully soon. I'm in the gym, I'm working. Um, I'm working on new new stuff. I'm um, trying to perfect the new style. Like I, I don't want to change who I am, but I do want to work on some different parts of my game. So uh, we've been focused on being more aggressive, fighting on the front foot instead of fighting on the back foot. And you know, um, you know, I'm ready to see like uh, what we've, I'm ready to work on what we've been working on inside the ring on a real person. And like I touched on earlier, so you, 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 you've um, been in two, you were in two sort of blockbuster buster fights, back to back headliners um, against AJ, against White. Did you find that has that opened many doors for you following those two two headline fights? Has, has it led on to any other things? Have you had any other offers off the back of that? Um, Yes and no. It kind of um, it put me out there. Um, it like showed the world who I am at the same time. I mean, we got some offers, but you know, uh, at the end of the day, boxing is, is a business, so we all try to make it make sense on all of our hands. So, um, you know, we had got a couple deals, and it stuff didn't work out all the way. But, you know, um, it did put me in a position to be able to get those type of fights. 
Absolutely. I mean, talking about boxing being a business, we've seen a lot of the, the fights recently going out to Saudi Arabia. Um, yeah. You know, some, some big figures involved over there. One one that stood out to me, we saw um, Philip Hergovich. He was in against Mark Demore, and I couldn't help but think that that you would have been a, probably a more credible opponent for someone like Hergovich that night on that card. Yeah, Has your I'm, name you sort of been in there for those fights? I'd like to go at somebody like Hergovich. Uh... I don't think I don't think our names came up across for each other. Um, they did like a while ago, some years back. But um, you know how boxing is. Somebody tell you one thing because they're trying to make a fight. That don't mean that they had it set in stone mm -hmm. and stuff. But uh, yeah, his name came up some years back. But yeah, I love that fight. Uh, I love a Philip Hargovich or a, a Zhang or a, um, or a, um, Daniel Dubois or somebody like that. Somebody that's you know up there at the top performing with the top players. Do you feel like Jermaine that there's a potential that maybe you're you're, you're slightly avoided um, by by some of the bigger names in the division? Are you not getting the fights you want? I mean, you come over and improve a real tricky opponent. Do you, do you feel like there's people that are avoiding fights with you? Uh, yeah, I feel I feel like I'm um, I'm somewhat avoided. I mean, um, I don't want to say nobody's scared of me or nothing like that. You know. Uh, us as fighters, we still got promoters and managers and shit like that. So we have other people that advise us not to do stuff or advise us that it's not the right time sometimes. So, you know, I can't put it all on the fighters, but I do feel like I'm a little avoided. You mentioned earlier talking about a rematch with White or or AJ uh, down the line. I'm sure your plan is to sort of work your way back into those sorts. If, if AJ gets his hands on the world title, maybe we'll see that down the line. I need to beat on both of them. I need to avenge all my losses like Lennox Lewis. That'd be quite something, Jermaine. That'd be quite something. And obviously, Dillian, he's, he's he's not been in the ring recently. He's, if he does come back, he's probably going to be looking for an opponent. I guess that's a fight that you'd, you'd jump on if, if that came around. Yeah, I'll, I'll be willing to. I'll be, I got to get my get back, so I'll be willing to. If you did get the rematch, how, how would you approach it differently, Jermaine? Or would you go about your business much the same? Uh, it was I, when I watched the videos. There's some tweaks I I could make. Um, some things I could do better. But I I feel like I I feel like I won the fight. Like I said, I feel like I I fought a pretty good fight. I feel like I out punched the most of the rounds, and I feel like I did everything I had to do to you know successfully win the fight. But I did um see some things where I where we capitalized on where I could be more um aggressive, where I can um show the crowd. You know, because sometimes in boxing, you can be winning around, but to the people, it don't really look like you're winning around. So, I mean, we've been working on that. That's the whole point of me saying uh, working on the style, working, being more aggressive, you know, to show the people that I'm dominating, not just to know I'm dominating, but to show the crowd I'm dominating too at the same time. So it was just, it's just small stuff, small tweaks, you know. On the Saudi card, I'm, I'm sure you saw it. We saw um, Joseph Parker and Deontay Wilder fight. I think, you know, Wilder's quite a heavy favourite for that. Did you get a chance to watch that? Were you quite surprised yeah. at Parker's performance and, and maybe how sort of tentative Wilder was in that fight? Uh, I was surprised how tentative Wilder was. Um, I watched I watched a couple fights of Parker. Parker's a fighter. You can't take that from him. He's going to come out there and fight regardless of the situation. But I was a little surprised that Wilder was a little gun shy. He wasn't really punching. I, I You know, I was just, you know, in this sport, this sport's a serious sport, so I just wanted to make sure, like, uh, he was okay and everything. Because he really didn't get, like, he didn't really get hit a lot. He got hit. But he didn't really get hit a lot. Most of the punches was on his arms, but he wasn't punching. Like he wasn't doing anything. Joseph Parker almost won the fight off a of jab. Hmm. Now, no, yeah. It was nice though. He was throwing a nice overhand right. But yeah, he was like, you know, it was hard. It's hard to kind of fight somebody when they not engaging. You know, uh, I only can chase you for so long, but at some point you're gonna have to engage. And it was like Wilder tried to engage for like a round or two, but it, outside of that, he really didn't engage. You know that Parker's obviously a, a class operator and, and not to be overlooked. And I think obviously Wilder had had a while out the ring. There was some talk about people wondering if Wilder was going to retire. We know now that he's not. He, he's looking to fight on potential of him being on the AJ and Garner on the card, I believe. Um, no opponent confirmed, and he's not confirmed on the show himself. But is that a fight you'd fancy Deontay Wilder on the on the card of AJ and Garner? That fight. Um... 
What's the official? Oh, oh that's mine. Sorry. When is when is the official date on that fight? It's coming up soon, isn't it? The AJ and Garni. I can't remember the exact date. Yeah, that's that's real soon. Actually, that's real soon. But we also got Usyk v Fury coming up as well. Um, and I know Wilder's looking to get out on one of those shows from what I've I've read and seen. So is that? Give me the proper time to prepare. I mean, they give me the proper time to prepare. You know, I, I honestly, I go at a lot of people. <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's just uh, with different calibers of fights, you know, you have to make sure you're absolutely ready. So if I get this, if I get the right time to prepare for a fight, I will come at anybody. Man. A lot's been made, you know, talking about Anthony Joshua versus Ngarni there. A lot's been made of the fact that Ngarni's come in from MMA. Of course, he's achieved a lot. He's a world champion in his own right. But he's coming in, he's gone straight in and fought Tyson Fury, now Anthony Joshua. And guys like yourself who have come up from a you know pure boxing background, had 25 odd bouts in the pros and a long amateur career. So, sort of, you know, he's come in and bypassed those those guys to get these opportunities. Does that bother you in any way at all, Jermaine, or do you not really read too much into that? It, it doesn't bother me as far as the aspect of um, him. It kind of bothers me as an aspect of the like the sport because you know uh, we got people that has worked for it that want those fights or want those chances and they can't get that chances. Now, granted, he is an own fighter; he's a world champion in his own right, but it's it's technically in a different sport. But on the same note, he wouldn't have been able to get that fight if he didn't perform a good fight with with Tyson Fury. I think he fought a good fight. I know it was kind of controversial. I'm still kind of split. I think he, I think he lost it. Like, it was a close card, but I, I think he lost. You know, we gonna get an honest opinion. He did. He fought a great fight, and I feel like that was a good showing for somebody to convert over from MMA to boxing. He, he looked, he didn't look like somebody that was fresh in the ring, basically. So you know, it's not like, uh, like I said, it's not a knock against him. It's kind of against the organization because at the same time. At the same time, I don't think we will be able to just jump over there and get uh, those caliber of fights if we was regular guys. Maybe if we was a world champion, then, yeah, that'd be different. So, you know, like we always say, at the end of the day, it's business. If he's bringing money, he's going to make it. For sure, for sure. Would we see, if the money was there, could we see Jermaine Franklin in an MMA ring or Octagon? But maybe, I don't know. I don't think I can get kicked, man. Them leg kicks hurt. Them <laughs> leg kicks hurt. I used to wrestle in like middle school and high school, but I don't to see people get uh to get kicked. I got a couple friends that do MMA, so to see uh people get kicked and like to hear a uh a, a leg kick to the head, yeah, that is crazy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. You've obviously uh, shared the ring with 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 AJ Jermaine, and you've watched Ngannou fight Fury. How do you see that fight playing out when we when we do get that card in in Saudi? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of split down the middle of it. I feel like Ngannou got something to prove, so he's gonna come out strong. But I think, I think, um, I think Joshua fights better with taller opponents. I think he he can get better punches off better combinations when he's fighting people around his same height. So um, it's really gonna be if he can take the power and still have the will. If Ngannou can take the power and still have the will to come forward and uh, get punches off, he got a he got a real great chance. But Joshua being a boxer, he got the experience to just box, basically, <laughs> just to win the fight off of boxing. So it really depends. And we know Joshua can be hurt. So we know Francis is a puncher from his sport. And he dropped Tyson, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, um, there's a lot of things that come into factor when when you put the fights together. So really, it's about Joshua keeping himself straight, not keeping himself safe, not taking um, big punches. And we know Agano is gonna come forward, and he's gonna throw a lot of punches. So yeah, it's like I said, I'm kind of split. It's it's a good chance for him. Can I push you for a prediction on that? Um, I don't know if if, if um, I think if I think if AJ can't take control early and dominate, I I think I got Agano winning. I don't know how, but if AJ doesn't dominate the fight early and and continue to be dominant. Then I think Ngannou is going. Um, I think Ngannou might pull it through because, like I said, he can hit. You don't want to get hit with big punches in later rounds. And then he he got the will to fight. You know, coming over from that from that MMA background, those guys, all, all of them, scrap. 
No matter if you could beat them up in the boxing ring, they still gonna scrap you until they can't scrap no more. Obviously, we're all eagerly waiting for the uh, undisputed fight, Tyson Fury versus Alexander Isak. I'm sure you're keeping a, a close eye on that. Um, we've had a delay, but rescheduled now for May. Just wanted to get your prediction on that one as well, Jermaine. I, don't know, I like I like Fury, but I I kind of got the underdog might be the underdog might pull it out. I, I think Usyk might pull it out, but Tyson Tyson is a hard guy to get by. You know you can't really. Uh, he got the perfect timing. He got the perfect like uh, ring generalship. So it's hard to really get around a guy that knows the ins and outs and small things to do to be able to knock you off your game plan. But Usyk, we all got to remember, Usyk came up from Cruiser. So he's he's a tad bit faster than us. He trains in the Loma camp. All those guys have great feet work. So the same thing he did to AJ, he basically just kept making them turn. AJ really couldn't get set and throw punches like he wants to because Usyk just keep dancing around him, keep making them turn, making them turn, making them turn. So... It's really going to be if if Tyson can slow Usyk down or if he can't. If he can slow him down, then Tyson got a chance because he's long. He can just throw jabs. But if he can't slow him down, then Usyk just going to play that inside-outside game and keep dancing around him. He's going to be able to score points without getting hit. Just finally, Jermaine, as well. So just to, going back to yourself, um, what does the ideal 2024 look like for Jermaine Franklin? If there's sort of three, you probably want to get out three times, I'd guess three guys you'd want to fight in 2024 and a message for, for the fans. I, I would love to fight at least three or four times this year. Uh, if, if possible, but, um, those three names I said earlier, those are still the three guys on the list. Um, you know, Shane, Du Bois, and, um, Hergovic and, um, you know, I just uh, want to say thank you to the fans, all the fans that are still supporting. And a special shout out to all my annual fans. I am hope I'm down there again soon. And, yeah, that's it. Jermaine Franklin, I'm sure we can't wait to have you back on these shores and see you out in action again. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on. And thank you for speaking to Through the Ropes. It's uh, Tom Colley with the 999 Assassin, Jermaine Franklin. Thank you.